the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. Welcome back. Today is Sunday, January 30th, 2022, and this is the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast Update Season 4, Episode 8, $44 million per year. So, regarding the value of a mailing list, I know more about this than most. Uh, I was manager of direct mail programs back in the uh, early 2000s under my um, mentor, Gary Halbert. Not only did I rent a lot of lists, but I actually rented out our list, and that's how hundreds of thousands of dollars were provided to start up ASM. So I'll get to what this uh, means in a minute, but I, I'm not uh, your average person when it comes to dealing with mailing lists. I understand the value of mailing lists. So court officers and people in positions of power, read your oath again. It just blows my mind how far how far we've gone and how far we've fallen in these things. Um, an oath is not a promise between two people. I'll just leave it there. Look up the definition. So, back to the value of mailing list. I stand by my claims that the mailing list that we build every single day is worth about $5 million right now. And we have had no marketing or public relations expenses in many years. Uh, If you want to amortize the cost of putting ASM back together, from this from this restart period, it still doesn't amount to much if you want to say that the parties in that were promotional, which of course they were. Um, doesn't take away from the fact that the mailing list is being generated and that it has value. And that once this market is a real one to one market as it was intentional as it was designed, intentioned it, from the beginning, this value will be realized. So it is a is an asset that is building by itself for the future. I stand by my claims. You are truly wasting your time if you're chasing me for money. Uh, my perpetual uh, vow of poverty, which will uh, began actually it began last year, but we reflected in all of my legal documents and tax filings, will uh, make it pointless. You will never collect a dime, a penny. Not even a fraction of a penny, ever, ever. It will never happen. You're wasting your time and your money. I guarantee it. And if you try something else, whoever you are out there, I'm going to turn this into a religious persecution case. And I'm not kidding. Pay attention to the media. Pay attention to the news. A lot of stuff going on. You better believe I'll go down that track. So, uh Truly, truly a waste of uh, resources and efforts. Never going to come to anything. Want to be wise? Be open to being proven wrong and changing direction. That's what wise people do. Uh, Ripple is still tangled up with the SEC, although it looks like they're making some progress. I think there is something to be said here for us in terms of uh, our settlement negotiations. There sure are a lot of unexpected deaths these days. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that. Awful lot of unexpected deaths, whether they've been uh, vaccinated or not vaccinated. I'll just leave that there. So the value of um, our customer list. Yeah, so number order number one is the trigger. Um, being able to publicize a eSports or regular sports league fundraise, which is basically giving them money as a gift because they don't give up any equity or debt. They don't get into debt. Um, since uh, DraftKings is losing money at an ever-growing rate, as their customer gra- uh, base grows, this means more customers equal greater losses. As far as the number that I use, uh, that they said their customers cost uh, almost $400. If you click on a free bet link or anything like that, your candidate is a new customer, even though you spent nothing. So once again, I stand by the numbers. Um, prospects are finding us and signing up, and we often receive emails asking when we were going to be lifting the restrictions to fund accounts. Again, that goes back to my claim that once the um, restrictions and are removed and once the market operates as it should, that these are going to convert. 
by the thousands. I would say we'll probably get 20% of that list will activate almost immediately. Okay, so they are paying nearly $400 for signups that will ultimately lead to losses. More customers, more losses. In our case, we're paying nothing for signups and we'll make money from the very first day once the market vision is fully realized. And incidentally, DraftKings has been hitting 52-week lows day after day after day. So, um, if you want to challenge me on anything, you want to call me a liar, I've actually set up a, uh, a forum subtopic for that, and I'll publish exactly what you send me in that topic. Um, when you make a claim, it is your job to prove the claim. It is not my job to disprove the claim. Get your head out of your butt. That's not how it works. And I'll publish anything, but that's not going to happen. Nobody's going to send me anything because, A, it doesn't exist, and, B, uh, then you'd identify yourself and can't have that because you got to hide in the darkness and throw stones from the, uh, from the, sep you know, from the uh, darkness. So you're not going to identify yourself. If you send an email, then, on, then, then you have to actually have a name because I'm not going to accept it any other way, so don't waste your time on that either. Incredible. Okay, it's your soul to lose. Time's getting pretty short. You know, I don't really have any uh, issues anymore with mixing these things. You better stop with the deceptions. Um, it's not looking good, folks. So if you want to um, wake up one day or actually not wake up one day and find yourself in eternal uh, a punishment for your behavior on this earth, go for it. It's your soul to lose, not mine. Nothing of value is built quickly. Rome was not built in a day. It's absolutely the case with us. Uh, this is not about some new game related to sports. This is not sports betting. This is creating something that's never been seen before. Do a little bit of research. You don't have to look any further than the tablet market and computers. Look how many times that um, started and stopped and false starts before basically I, uh, Apple iPad took over. It took a very long time. It actually took longer than, than we've been doing this. It goes back. It goes really, if you go all the way back, it goes back more than 30 years. But if you want to start with the, the I would say what really counts is the thrust of that push the first time. It was in the 90s, in the early 90s, because I was in the computer business when that happens, when that happened. So back to the uh, cost per acquisition. The reason that number keeps to, keeps climbing uh, for the gambling guys is because this is uh, giving away money. <laughs> Remember, the uh, gamblers are bonus jumpers and they're not loyal. Uh, they will just go wherever they get the best odds and the best promos. I saw that in Costa Rica in the days that we were building the sports book businesses. Uh, that's exactly how it works. That's why you have uh, gambling operators choose multiple skins. Uh, they'll basically rebrand themselves uh, different ways to try to capture those bonus jumpers under the same umbrella. It 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 doesn't. It's not going to change. That's that's how it works. Um, Offshore is going to win as long as the Wire Act is not enforced. It's incredible. This there's no way that you're going to beat them because they have more experience. They have better odds. They have no tax and reporting. And that is, if you just add all those things together, that is a huge preference. Uh, or I'm sorry, a huge. Um, advantage over the competition that you just cannot have uh, here in the States because, look, these people have been doing this for decades offshore, decades. So it's a trap. Either you uh, you enforce the Wire Act and have to shut everybody down or you don't enforce the Wire Act and you have a competitive threat that won't go away offshore. All right. So copycats there's a few of them out there one of them is based upon little team pennants i guess those things you put on the end of your pencil <laughs> uh that's that's hilarious um listen this is not a game what we're doing here this is about uh raising money without giving away equity or putting uh teams in leagues in debt um that's the purpose of it it's not some clever legal workaround, which I see lots of that going on, trying to skate around. It's not a stock market legally, and it's not a gambling uh, exchange or gambling outfit legally defined. I mean, that's not what we're doing here. What we're doing here 
is the creation of a new way to raise capital without um, equity or debt and building of the new sports economy. So if you're not if you're not competing with us on that level, then you're not competing with us at all because we created this category and we created this product and it's a false comparison. You just have a little toy. That's all you have. You have a little toy or you have a, a gambling outfit in disguise. So the Walmartization of the metaverse, yeah, I'm, I'm cold to this. This is, uh, this is just going from bad to worse. People already spend too much time on their computers. They already have lost touch with what's real and what's not real, and this is only going to make things worse. Um, I have a lot more to say about this that doesn't directly deal with uh, ASM, and I'll just leave that for another conversation on another podcast or another a piece of media, but this is a very, very bad trend, extremely bad trend. I want nothing whatsoever to do with this. Um, Netflix down 20% after growth. So this, yeah, this is um, a forward look indicator for the economy. Uh, again, you know, the name of the Wall Street game is hype, 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 and more hype. And when they can't hype it, it means that they're going to report something that they just can't weasel word their way around. And so Netflix having um, their growth slow down, which, you know, I mean, especially given the fact that people sit in front of their computers and TVs more than ever, uh, is, is a big deal. And they cut their stock by 20%. So just the point of this is um, we're about to see a, uh, a slowdown in the economy. And the easy money policies of the Fed are coming to an end as well. Um, the programs related to the virus situation are winding down. All of that stuff, I would say by summer, if not sooner, um, it's going to be a problem. I, how big that problem is, is hard to say right now because there's still too many pieces moving around the board as far as policy. But all current indicators show... Um, based on my view of things that, you know, it's things are about to turn negative. So the first penny by penny accounting, as I stated on um, prior podcast of uh, income and spending for me personally, um, I do still pay for aspects of ASM direct cash costs that are not uh, recovered. I don't get it, get the money back. Uh, so I'm paying out of pocket to maintain things. Um, not too much, just a little bit. And others are also doing the same. You know, the people who stick around no matter what happens, um, the 5%, actually, it's not even 5%. I would say 98% run away, 2% stick around. And I've seen this show before back in 2009. Uh, everybody's there when the party's there, but boy, when there's no party, uh, got, a lot, got a lot of spectators, but not a whole lot of participants. So that will start... Um, February 1st, and I will report the the figures um, on that podcast, on the It All Began in the 70s podcast, because it really is my personal accounting more than ASM accounting. So that's when it's going to start. So I'll start that on the um, February 6th, 2022 podcast, the reporting of that information, although that'll only be the first few days of February. So I'm, it may not be anything to report yet or very little to report, but um, that's where you're going to find that information if you want to see it. Uh, David versus Goliath story. Who won that one again? Just curious. You know, if you don't know, look it up. So the SRI, I'm going to go back to something here. The SRI was developed as a reaction to the legal opinion back in, uh, I think it was 2007, claiming that ASM was possibly violating, you guessed it, the Wire Act. <laughs> possibly violating the Wire Act. That's the reason that we took off and built the SRI in the first place. Then that very same law is ignored and gambling itself is pushed forward about 15 years later. Then a 90-year-old set of laws, which is what the SEC operates on, Sec Securities Acts of uh, the early 1930s, is used to try to destroy everything built in good faith with great sacrifice of blood, sweat, tears, time, and treasure. Yeah, that's not going to work for me, folks. And you know what? I uh, I know that there are um, two-faced backstabbers amongst us who help make this happen. 
And if you think that that's going to go unaccounted for, <laughs> you're dead wrong. It will it will come out. Everything in the darkness comes out to the light. I guess you were hoping that everything would just be utterly obliterated and I don't know, I would be in a jail cell somewhere and you could laugh even though it's to your own harm. I mean, do you do you want to lose your money? Is that what this is about? Because remember, I'm not going to get rich from this. That wasn't even going to happen before this SEC stuff happened. So it's really pretty self-destructive and stupid. But anyhow, um, I don't care about thousands of pages of lawyer gibberish uh, explaining why, you know, I don't know, the Wire Act doesn't work or uh, laws written in the 1930s apply to, a, you know, our legal setup, which is in the 2000s, <laughs> 90 years later. I, I don't care. The simple facts are this. We filed the uh, no action request. They lied to me about uh, pulling it down off the website, never acted upon it. No jury's ever going to understand that. This case is not going to go anywhere. They know that at this point. They know that. This is all going to be put away. And everybody who stabbed us in the back is going to be exposed. That's so, you know, get ready to explain yourself because the day's coming. Uh, almost uh, exactly 15 years ago, yeah, that's when the legal opinion uh, was given that, that basically put the dividing line down and we started going toward, um, you know, we built the SRI as a parallel product as a response to that. And look, I've given them plenty of time to prove themselves as honorable. Um, our intentions were honorable. We did everything was asked of us and more and more, much more commenting on cases, trying to help develop the law. Um, 15 years of my life, I've gone down this track of, um, you know, legality and I just get stabbed in the back and, and it, I don't believe them anymore. So I'm going to give this to Alper, uh, and he's, he can uh, continue to go down. You know, he, he still <laughs> incredibly still believes that, uh, that, that he can convince him. Uh, I don't think we can. I, I often wonder if we should have just driven this thing to the moon back in uh, Costa Rica and said, you know, fooey on, um, on the wire act. But here, here's the problem with that. That did come up. And I said, well, who's going to stand in this role? Because back then they were prosecuting people, um, you know, specifically from Costa Rica. They were prosecuting people who were running sports books down there. So when it came, when the rubber meets the road, when the rubber met the road, nobody wanted to, to, to they wanted me to stand in the role, but, and, but nobody wanted to actually <laughs> take any risk. All upside, no downside. Yeah, that's, uh, that's how the world works. So, all right. So, so the 30-year-old, let's go through the gambling stuff. So the 30-year-old PASPA law is repealed. That's not the whole picture, folks, okay? They can, they've obviously gone about uh, pretending like this is all there is to it, but it's not because the, 60, the older law, the 60-year-old Wire Act, which was restated early last year, early, uh, not last year, actually, early 2020, I guess it was, um, restated that it applies to sports betting, okay? So an older more settled set of laws restated just two years ago said, nope, it's still there and it still applies. And then an even older set of laws, which run the SEC to this day, 90 years old, are enforced. So 90-year-old laws are enforced, 60-year-old laws are enforced, but uh, I'm sorry, 90-year-old laws are enforced, 60-year-old laws are not enforced, and 30-year-old laws are not enforced because it's been repealed, passed. But that's nonsense, okay? That's nonsense, all right? You've lost all credibility with me. That isn't going to work. That's a bunch of crap, all right? It's crap. And also, there's the UIGEA of 2006. So there's an even more recent... Has that been repealed? The Un Unlawful Internet Gambling Enforcement Act of 2006? Has that been repealed? That was also a reason for... Um, the SRI development and stepping off of the ASM model to the SRI model is because that was basically a restatement of the, uh, it strengthened, I'm pretty sure it strengthened the Wire Act, among other things. So this, all of this hypocrisy, I, it, uh, I mean, it makes me want to throw up, frankly. It's, it's really sick. So as far as I'm concerned at this point, the whole system has lost all credibility with me. They can go piss up a rope. All right, so regarding the SEC case, yeah, you're not getting past a six-year-old uh, no action. That, that It's actually going to be six years old, uh, I think, in two weeks. That, that's not going to work. 
um, that's just not going to work. There is, there is no way in the world that a jury is ever going to understand that. Okay, so DraftKings making new 52-week lows. <clears throat> Excuse me. Hype, 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 hype. Boy, the lying hype machine is on overdrive, I can imagine. Um, why? This has got to be hurting all kinds of efforts on their part. Their non-earnings is going to come out here in a couple weeks. So they're going to lose even more money. I'm, I'm not sure. I, it's hard. To, this is the really the the busy time of year. So I I don't. I'm not going to put a prediction around this t- as far as how far they're going to miss on the uh, on the on the earnings. But they're definitely going to lose money. Uh, I'm not sure how much this time. It, it the the guidance may be correct on this one. I've been right the last um, year or so on every projection. So I'm going to say it's going to it's it's going to be close to the guidance. If it's if they miss way off the guidance, then things are even worse than I thought. As far as my motives, uh, if you think that my motives aren't pure, as far as wanting to just see uh, the development of the new sports economy, regardless of what it meant to me, take a look at the history of my stake in ASM, which um, it doesn't exist and it hasn't existed for a long time. It was uh, consumed even. Um, I think it was even consumed before we restarted ASM uh, this time in, in 2014. We started rewriting it in 2015. I think it was even before that, but it's definitely before the SEC case. So uh, th- it's not like I'm working for a big payday. Uh, it's All my stake is gone. Uh, DraftKings, yeah, all right. So if they're worth more dead than alive... Then the market will destroy them. It's hard to say at this point because there's so many people that have their fingers in this pie. It's hard to say whether <clears throat> they're going to let it go. I mean, I you know they're I'm sh- I'm sure they're d- going to pull out every trick in the book to try to save it um, because there's just so many people that have a stake in it at this point, and if going to end up with egg all over their face, not to mention um, a whole bunch of money lost, billions uh, lost. So back to uh, the bogus claim that ASM is a Ponzi scheme. There's actually more explanations in this, but if we take in one cent of passive income to the dividend reserves, which is guaranteed because the dividend reserves will be substantial. Uh, As you can see from the reporting statistics, there's millions of dollars in there all the time. Uh, As soon as one cent flows in from the outside, which could just be done through basic uh, savings account, then that's the Ponzi argument's gone. It's there's no there's no such thing. It fails on a lot of other uh, definitions, but that's the one that is easiest for people to understand. The destructive negative voices are always the loudest in society. Um, that's always the case, and I would pose this question to the uh, destructive backstabbers: Have you considered that you have it wrong? What if we're right? Are you mature enough to admit it? Okay, the Ponzi, this is the same thing again. Um, it doesn't work just based on simple uh, uh, arithmetic of passive savings book, savings account income on the dividend reserves. The end. The early days of sports betting, they love to put this out of the media to try to stop the fall of uh, DraftKings and other uh, companies' stock price. That's a complete lie, and it's stupid on the face. People have been betting in general for a long, long time, and they've been betting online offshore for decades. This is just trying to stop the pro- the uh, stock price from falling. It's puff, puff, puff. Offshore will own the market, just like I've explained over and again. Bonus jumpers are going to go wherever they get the best deal. Gamblers do not want to follow the law. Say there's a bunch of people that we're just waiting for the legality to make to say it was okay is just simply false and it's just not the way they see the world the rebels right rebellion rebellion that's what they're about you can't have it both ways and if you want to doubt what i'm saying look at what happens or has happened in the illegal versus legal uh cannabis market in california right the illegal market still vastly outstrips the legal market case closed Okay, penny by penny accounting from July 1st, 2014 to December 25th, 2021. If you're a company stock grantee and wish to receive a copy of every penny that has been received and spent, 
that's in about seven and a half years, right? Seven and a half years as provided to the court and anybody else that would ask for it under legal authority. Um, I have nothing to hide. Uh, send it. Send your request to help at allsportsmarket.com. This, again, you have to be a stock grantee. I'm not going to accept anything else. And no, line dis- no non-disclosure to sign. If you're an honest person, that's not necessary. Honorable people don't need such things. Um, I would stand before God himself with these documents. So can you produce your um, income and spending for the last seven and a half years? I can actually do it for more than a decade. Uh, could you do that? And would you give it to somebody that asked for it, even if they don't have any legal right? Let me, let me put it to you like that. If certain parties would not have or would stop forming little cliques, and attempting to work against their own interests, we would have achieved our aims 10 years ago and it, and probably at many points along the way. Okay, uh, multiple VIP speaking events. This is just, in, uh, I think I've covered this further down here, but um, just getting to the point of why I don't care about the secular world anymore. I actually did multiple VIP speaking uh, events with Hero Club, not just the one in the Condé Nast uh, t- uh, Towers and World Trade Center, also uh, in San Francisco and a couple other places. In fact, Chad was at one of those. Um, so I understand. I mean, there's not there's no mysteries to me here about these things. Um, the Hero Club story about making millionaires, um, that's actually what I want to see happen, even though one of those millionaires isn't going to be me. If you want to see that um, story that was very inspirational to me and, and what I really want to see happen, um, even though, it won't, 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 like I said, it's not going to make me me rich, um, look at that link. It's under number 32 in the outline. So while everybody else is fundraising, asking for money to fund their attempt at the sports gambling market or to try and copy our model and fail, we've seen it for almost 20 years, we have the opposite problem. We need to be allowed to prove our ability to raise money and basically gift it to a qualified league. It's ironic and totally the opposite, like light versus darkness and invested versus gambling. Actually, if you think about it, it makes sense. We're the opposite in every way. Um, lots of also um, in the unexpected deaths, the, uh, there's, there's also a lot of suicides happening. Uh, there's a huge suicide problem. Huge, 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 huge. Um, and it's understandable, actually. For uh, That's too much to cover here. But there's a lot of things that are contributing to this. Um, the icing on the cake has been all these pandemic uh, restrictions and stuff. But this has been coming for a while. So um, in regards to the funding, if you support this work, um, I just want to point out that 140% of what you uh, contribute will go back out to school supplies in the U.S. That's because uh, I take 10% immediately uh, from that amount, and I uh, contribute it to World Vision's program, which has a 14 times multiplier from their corporate matching, which means that basically you put out more in charity than you provide to to um, to this effort, which, as I said, is just, uh, at this point, very basic needs. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> there are many um, operators in the quote-unquote legal sports betting market, which is a lie, the big lie, because the Wire Act is still in place, not to mention other laws like UIGEA of 2006. They're going to begin destroying each other for market share. That's actually already started. And especially with the cratering of stock prices, you're going to really see that happening. All right, let's have a little refresher here to those people who don't seem to understand how the world works. If you make a claim, okay, it's your burden of responsibility to prove that claim beyond a reasonable doubt and with objectively verifiable evidence. Okay, it's not my job to defend a negative position or to respond to anonymous claims. It's not my job, and I'll never do it. No face-to-face identification, no chance I will respond. Zero. Okay? I tried this already with doing... a. Uh, video, ask me anything, and as I expected, (laughs) none of those people would show up. See, why, if you're so sure of yourself, will you not do a face-to-face? You know, shame on your parents. I'm going to blame this on your parents. Apparently, they didn't teach you right from wrong. If you continue this behavior, 
Your life is going to be filled with tragedies until your last breath, and then you're going to burn in hell. That's how it should. That's, that's how it should go, and that's how it will go. And you better watch your tongue when you're talking about things. You, you think that there's no accounting and that you could just spout off things without accountability. I guarantee you that's not true. And it's even more true with someone who's doing God's will like I am. And yes, I said that and I mean it. Okay. I've t- I'm telling that story in the other podcast. It is exactly the case. Uh, just a snippet of it. You know, I, I got on my knees and I said a prayer, help me get ASM put back together. Um, this was back in 2013, I believe. You know, because I was at my wits end, about to throw it all out the window for the final time. I mean, I thought about it many times before that. And I said, look, I need a, I can't figure this out. I don't know how to get this back together. And I said, if you show me how, I will tell everybody that how it happened and that you, you told me how how to do it. And I'm keeping my word. Okay. Because from that moment, from that moment, okay, things changed. And and ASM came back together, and AS, A showed up. Everything, everything. There's too many parts to talk about here. The whole stock analyst hype system should be illegal. How's the, I mean, I just don't get it. I it's so obvious manipulation. You know, you you put out an upgrade, and it's a pump and dump scheme. It's it's just it's just like the um, it's just like the political uh, lobbying business. I mean, it's it just should be absolutely one hundred percent illegal. It is it is uh, corruption. And again, you know, all these people sign oaths. An oath is not a promise to a person. <laughs> so you're you're really, uh, especially in these days of these um, deaths that just kind of suddenly happen there's awful lot of unexpected deaths these days are you ready to to deal with what happens after i mean don't say it can't happen it happens all the time um you know you you can laugh and giggle about people that believe in god and all that stuff but you ever stopped and 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 you can tell me oh evolution and it we came from monkeys and all that other stuff you ever considered the other side of that and what if you what if you're wrong <laughs> You know, are you ready to? Are you prepared to deal with the other side of that? You better think about it, because a lot of terrible things are happening right now. Um, and if you want to say I don't know what the secular world, th- this is this is uh, kind of a snapshot. If you want to tell me I don't understand the secular world, um, nonsense. Okay, I have government experience in D.C. You guys all know this. This has been going all the way back to Woods Rogers um, dealing with a lobbyist in, the, in, in D.C. and in other places, um, courts, uh, government regulators, people that were very high up in the government and still are very high up in the U.S. government. I uh, bought about 100 cars in my life so far, not counting boats and motorcycles, most of them brand new. Built multiple uh, multi-million dollar businesses starting in my early 20s with very little money, a few thousand dollars. Bought and sold multiple homes, including new ones in the U.S. and outside the U.S. Business partners all over the world, having my name and projects printed in major media inside and outside the U.S. multiple times. Um, in Costa Rica, we had a press scrum that uh, every single uh, person saw. I didn't actually realize that's what happened. I guess I should have with the number of TV cameras and all the reporters and stuff that showed up. But we were so busy at the time, I didn't really give uh, thought to it. It was when uh, somebody came up to me one time and said, why were you on television? I went, what are you, what are you talking about? I said, I said, you saw that? And they said, everybody saw that. So don't, don't, don't tell me that I missed something. I didn't miss anything. And if you want to challenge me on that, then again, send it to help at allsportsmarket.com and I'll publish it. I've traveled all over the Americas and the world. Bought everything I've ever wanted. Um, my bucket list is empty. Um, my initial trip to Israel in December of 2018, which, by the way, was financed by my credit cards, okay, which were discharged in bankruptcy, along with a lot of uh, tens of thousands of dollars of ASM expenses. Um, and the confirmation trip during the spring was, I basically had to go back and, did I really see what I thought I saw? That's really when everything changed and confirmed to me that... Um, and this was before the back, before the economy started to slow in in the summer. It started to slow in the spring and summer of uh, nineteen, and then 
uh, the SEC case filed in, in the fall, and then right after that, uh, coronavirus has been the track we've been on ever since. You know, it was before that, because uh, December 2018 and then spring 2019, basically Christmas and Easter, that's when I, uh, that's the dividing line. That's pretty much the decision was made for me that I didn't want anything to do with the secular world any, anymore. Something I've been thinking about for about 10 years. It just confirmed to me that I want to spend my time uh, in, in ministry and some really in, in, not so much as a preacher, but as a, because uh, I, I don't think I have that exactly. Um, but I can I can corroborate my story. I can basically show through the sequence of events and things that have happened um, in the building, especially the building of ASM, and especially after the the uh, 2009 crash, um, that that God is real and he's and you should believe in him. That's really that's my uh, ministry per se is just the expounding of that story of of how we got here and you know and and that's that's it you know not 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 uh particularly a a preacher but just that storytelling i think is is powerful especially with the proof that i'm putting together which is the hollywood sports bible project so uh and don't tell me that i don't know you know, there's more to go on on the secular world. Our, we had a Super Bowl party at Snoop Dogg's house. Um, you know, this year's Super Bowl is in L.A. and Snoop is doing the halftime show. So don't don't talk to me about yeah, but okay, there is no yeah, but it does. Where how much further does it go? I mean, it's a plane. It's a, it's a horizontal move at, from those places. Uh, you know, I've toured SpaceX. Uh, I mean, anyway, I miss nothing. Um, One taker of uh, the data offer, the seven plus years of every single cent in and out, almost 30,000 transactions there, only one taker. So once again, where are the angry hordes? Um, Yeah, stock analysts are such, I mean, it's just, wow, what a complete scam. Uh, Upgrade your stock, then call your media pals to pimp it out. Uh, Just like the political, there should be no money in politics. The whole lobbying and donor industries are also garbage. Um, Jeff Hazlett, Hero Club, often said that rich and influential does not usually go together. Interesting that, you know, I'm remembering all these things. He said, you got to pick one. Uh, I did that. I said, uh, you know, that's why I gave up my stock a long time ago. I have no issue with other people getting wealthy and from ASM. In fact, I'd be happy to see it. Um, It's not my motivation. I don't care. Um, but I do care that it happens for those that it should, and that's what I'm explaining in more detail on the 70s podcast. It would be wise for those of you who do wish to get wealthy to stop defeating your own purposes. We're one, please listen carefully, okay? Seriously. We are one fundraise away from success, and we're not asking for money. I'm talking about looking for a fund, a, a league to fund. So if that's truly what you want, if it's so important to you, then stop the negative garbage and get on side and make that happen. And then you will get what you're after. Okay? You're defeating your own purposes. You're not going to defeat me. That's not going to happen. You're playing checkers in a three-dimensional chess game. You're not going to defeat me. That's never going to happen. Give up on that. But if you want your return, get on side. Okay, so the ASM pilot market alone has averaged about $44 million per year in trades. That's just the pilot market, not the educational. I'm not counting that. Just the pilot market. $44 million a year. It's almost $4 million a month. $1 million a week. Okay? That's pretty impressive from any angle, especially given all the circumstances, and no money in or out for years. And I said this before, and I'm going to say it again and again and again and again. This will become the biggest business in the history of the world, eventually. Once we give away, <laughs> so crazy, one, but it's true. Once we give away money to one qualified league and we activate the press machine, gravity, which we have clearly shown we can do, clearly, all the way back to Costa Rica, 
from Costa Rica, the uh, every single network and radio station of significance covered our sponsorship of the Costa Rica National Soccer League, the 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 co- the country team, you know Costa Rica national team. We were a, sp- a sponsor, name sponsor. Every everybody covered that. The entire country saw that. I didn't realize that until later. So. How much bigger does it get than having the everybody in a country see see your? Because they ran it multiple. They actually ran it multiple times. I found out later they repeated it. I didn't know that. <laughs> From there until uh, Joe uh, Joe Kernan's segment on CNBC with Zach. That's folks. That's it. I mean, bang bang. There's no there's no further. And we still have the ability. And I, look, we can activate the press machine. We just need the story. So the story comes from uh, raising money for one qualified league. And then every single aspect of the business will, will come from that. So to those misguided souls who thought or think that you're hurting me by lying to government agencies, holding fast or defending your deceitful, treacherous actions and generally behaving like greedy, godless reprobates, listen up. I was never going to get rich from this. That was not my motive. And Alper and others will tell you the same thing. I have consistently demonstrated my intentions through my actions and sacrifices over a very long period of time, more than 10 years. The sooner you wise up and realize you're actually hurting yourself, the better. If being wealthy from your stake in ASM is your goal, reverse your actions. Reverse your actions. If you do not, you will be the casualty of all this, and it will not be me, and it will not be ASM. You are going to fail. The terms of service have stated from day one that this is an experimental market and your contributions are donations. Okay, that's what it said. No matter how much you don't like that, that's what it said. And it said that from the beginning and I never said anything else. That's called a fact. No matter how much it might not favor your agenda, this is a nonprofit organization. Even though the 501c3 hasn't yet been full restored, it doesn't matter. The core entity is still a nonprofit. Those are separate. Okay. The entity is a state entity, and the federal exemption is on top of that, which we have until the end of this year to submit the forms to restart the 501c3. So we're still a nonprofit. That's the truth. I've never guaranteed success, and I've never lied about anything, anything along the way. Not a thing. Every single thing I stated was 100% true when I said it. I didn't shade it. I didn't slant it. I didn't spend it. I didn't spin it or bend it at all. Because events did not work out as I had hoped or something else happened does not mean I did not report them accurately. I did. If you make a counterclaim and get this clearly, reprobates, I'm not responsible to disprove your claim. You are responsible to prove your claim. That's how the law works. Remember that. Call me a liar. I'm lying about what I said. Then you send independently verifiable proof to help at allsportsmarket.com, and I will publish it without editing it. Anything else proves you are a deceptive, cowardly reprobate headed for the lake of fire. Know it. Your impatience is your problem, not mine. To try to change the rules doesn't change the rules, okay? Those every cent that came into this business since 2014 or 13 was a donation, and it was marked clearly. You'd do well to read the story about a goose of a certain color. And I have started a log. So anybody who wants to call me a liar, send your evidence. Make sure if you have links to it that you have the links in the email. And I'll publish it in a specific uh, section of the, of the notice board just specifically for that. Okay? I'm not going to receive anything because it doesn't exist and you're not going to identify yourself. So... Prove me wrong. Go for it. The sports vote campaign survey, most recent one, ends tomorrow, the 31st of January. So please please, uh, participate in that if you want to. This is item number 50 in the raw outline. And also, Alper will be reporting the uh, class action decision tomorrow. And I will forward that on uh, when I get it. So... Uh, please see the show notes for updated resources and please consider supporting this work. As I've explained, it's only for extremely basic uh, expenses and I'm going to do a penny by penny accounting starting February 1st and I'm going to publish that. And again, uh, 140% of whatever you give goes towards the educational programs in the U.S. So thank you very much for your time and I will speak with you again in two weeks. Bye now.